Welcome to MSPTDA video number seven. Hey, in this video, we're still talking about Power Query, and we're going to see the six different joins or six different merges we can do in Power Query. We can do an inner join, full outer left, ante right, ante left outer, right outer, and even a self join. Now, the word join means we're going to take two tables and join them based on a column. Then we can ask questions like, do both columns contain the same item? Does only the first column contain the item but not the second? So join means we can join two columns, or as we'll see, we can even join two columns on one side and two columns on the other. The merge part of this means we will take the result, meaning is there overlap, and deliver a merge table. In each one of these cases, we're taking two tables and doing some sort of join to get some sort of merged result. For our inner join, we're going to be running an AND logical test where we're only interested in the overlap between the two tables. We will join the two employee columns. And only when the name is in column 1 and in column 2 will we take those names and merge them into a new table. For our full outer join example, we'll run an OR logical test. I want everything in the first table or everything in the second table or any that are matched in the overlap. We'll connect the two tables using supplier ID and merge into a new table. Notice kangaroo is listed from the first table, but nothing from the second table. DB, second table, but not the first table. All the other ones had matches. The left anti-join, this is when we only want items in the left table. The overlap is completely left out. Only items in the first table that are not in the second table merged into a new table. Right anti-join, only in the right table, not in the left table. We only want the items in the second table that are not in the first merged into a new table. Left outer join, for most of us, this is a classic lookup into the right table. We'll get to see three examples of left outer joins that will actually solve some complicated problems when we're doing lookup in Excel. Our first example will simply join product on product to get a resultant table that looks up the price. Notice the diagram. We only have the overlap from the right table. That's why Majestic Butte doesn't show up over here, because there are no Majestic Buttes over here. Also, because we're doing a left outer, notice Kangaroo doesn't have a match over here. But since we're taking everything from the left, it better show up in the merge table. The second example for left outer is when we have two columns that will serve as our key. This will be our foreign key, and two columns over here will connect using a join. This will be the primary key. The result will be the correct price based on two columns. Now notice in Excel, when you have two lookup values, you cannot use a standard lookup function. You have to switch over to either a helper column or an array formula. The third left outer example will be a lookup, but get this. We have invoice number. Those are the columns we're joining. But look at this. The left table has a single lookup value, and we need to return multiple matches. Now, this is the classic problem in Excel. Single lookup value return multiple items which requires an array formula or some ifs. But with Power Query join and merge, it's going to be easy. We can do a left outer, and it will automatically pull all of the matching values. Not only that, but right in the merge process, there's an option to either show all rows or aggregate. And in this example, we'll see how to sum. So left outer will really be the most powerful and versatile join for us when we're doing merges. Now we'll also see the right outer. And just like the right anti, it's not used very often, because most of the time we're doing 
left outers, and we just adjust the tables depending on what we want to do. But we'll see an example of how to do a right outer, where we want all from the right, matching from the left, merged together. Finally, we'll see how to do a self-join, where we have two columns in one table, and we need to merge to get the correct names. Now I've downloaded this file. This is the start file from the links below the video. And don't forget, below each video in this class, there's always PDF notes. For this merge video, there's PDF notes with 36 pages. So if you like to read and look at pictures to complement what you see in the videos, be sure to look at those PDF notes. And there's always homework problems. So once you watch the video and read the notes, you can go practice what you've learned. Now our first example is on the inner because we're going to do an inner join, an inner merge. Table 1, that's the left table. Table 2, that's the right table. Now this table has a list of names of the people from this company that went to the DAX Basic San Jose conference. This table has a list of employee names who went to the DAX Basics Bellevue conference. Now look at this. Some of these employees got to go to both. Now I actually have gone to Marco Russo's DAX conferences, a couple different ones. And you won't believe it. There are people that go to the same conference multiple times. If we could all be so lucky. So our question we're going to ask of these two data sets is who attended both conferences? We need to extract the names that occur in both lists. Who were the ones lucky enough to go to both conferences? And this will involve an inner join. An inner join is an AND logical test. I need to find something that's in column 1 and in column 2. Is Saul in column 1? True. Is Saul in column 2? False. So we're not going to include that one. Is Raven in column 1? True. Raven in column 2? True. Because we get two trues in our final merge, that name has to be included. And it will always be the case for an inner join, whether we have single columns in both tables or multiple columns. Only when we find matching values in both columns are the records extracted. Now, merge in Excel Power Query. We're using Office 365, so data, get and transform, get data, down to combine queries, and there it is. Now, there's two important things about using merge. And I'm going to click this. I'm going to come to the Merge dialog box and click the drop down. And you know what? I don't see anything. And the reason why is because we cannot directly access Excel tables if our data comes from Excel. We always have to import, whether we're in Excel or Power BI Desktop, it has to actually be imported as a query first. So the only thing that's allowed here are queries. Not only that, but over here, I actually imported one of these tables and converted it to a list object. List objects cannot be merged. So the only thing that we can merge in this dialog box are queries that are table objects. So let's do that. I'm going to close Merge, click in one of these tables. I'm going to click From Table or Range. That name is not OK, so watch this. I'm going to come over to Queries. Expand a little bit over here. Click on the list, F2 to put it in edit mode. And I'm going to say list, enter. I can actually edit the name here or over there. I'm going to hit F2, end key. And this is going to be called table. All of the steps are fine. Close and load, close and load too. Pretty much whenever we're doing merges, we're going to import as a connection only. And this is true whether we're getting the data from Excel or externally from a database or a text file or whatever. Click OK. Now I'm going to click in the second one, Alt-APT. Everything in our query is fine, so now we need to load. And I want to use only keyboards. So I'm going to use the Alt key. And just like in Excel and Word, when you use Alt, the screen tips come up. I want to tap F. Then I'm going to use down arrow to get to close and load, Enter. In the dialog box, I'm going to notice only create a connection. 
O is underlined. So Alt-O, the OK key is highlighted, so I hit Enter. I do import a lot of Excel tables. So I do use that incredibly long keyboard, not necessarily because it's faster, but it's easier on my fingers and hands than touching the mouse. Now we can see the icon. These are tables, and they've been imported as queries. So now when we go up to Get Data, Combine, Merge, we can select the first table. There it is. Select the second table. Come down, and I'm going to select the Join kind, Inner, only matching rows. Now if I click OK, there's no OK button. Don't forget to select the columns. We have to tell Merge, whatever the Join kind, which two columns it's going to use to compare. Now when I click OK, this will bring us into the editor. I'm going to name this query, Inner Join Merge Employee went to both conferences. Now let's look at what happened here. This is the first table, so it lists the matching items. When we click off to the side in our attending Bellevue DAX conference, notice the icon up here. That means this is a table column. Each row contains a table. We can see down here, there's the matching table. Each one of these will have exactly one item. Because this is an inner merge, all of them are matching. With the rest of our joins, we'll see that sometimes we'll get null values, either in the first table or the second table. Now we do not need this column, so I'm going to right click Remove. That's all we want. Now look over here, Applied Steps, we have two steps. Up in the formula bar, we can see the table.remove columns function. It took the previous step and removed that column. If we click on Source, then come up to the formula bar to expand. Look at this, the table.nestedJoin function, six arguments. There's the left query. That's the column for the join. The right query, the column from that table for the join, the name of the new column. And look at that, join kind dot enter. That means we're doing an inner join. Uncollapse. Click on Remove Columns. Close and load. Close and load to. I'm going to put it on the existing sheet. I should have selected the correct cell first. Usually it'll pick that up. E5, click OK. And there we've done an inner join to merge two tables into one. Now before we go look at our next join, I want you to notice that we have a bunch of queries. And in this Excel workbook, we're going to have like 10 or 20 queries. So there's a great way to organize queries. Just like in Windows Explorer, we can create folders. I'm going to right click New Group, Inner Joins, click OK. Now I can click on the first one, hold Shift, click on the last one. Right click, move to group, inner joins. And now I can collapse or uncollapse. So I'm going to collapse that. Now let's go look at our next join, a full outer. Now when we do a full outer join, that means I want everything from both tables. We still need columns to connect the two tables. From the product side, we're going to use supplier ID. From the supplier side, we're going to use supplier ID. Now, a full outer is an OR logical test. That means we still have this column where we could do matching, but we actually are not. We want everything. Records that are only on the left, OR records that are only on the right, OR records that are in both. That means for kangaroo CC, since it's not over here, it will show up in the final table. But the corresponding record from the supplier table will contain nulls. Similarly, DB is in the right table, but not the left. So it will show up in the merge table. But the record from the left table will contain nulls. Now, a full outer join is not as common as an inner, a left outer, or a left ante. But we want to see how to do this. Now I went ahead and hit pause and imported both of these tables. So now we have queries that are table objects. Not only that, but I want to create a folder. Right click, new group, something like full outer, click OK. Click, shift, click, right click, move to, 
And it's completely off the screen here, so full outer. And now we have our table queries inside of the folder, full outer. To merge data, get data. Combine queries, merge. In the merge dialog box, I want the records from the product table to show up on the left side. So I'm going to choose that as the left table. Click on supplier ID, supplier table, click on supplier ID. Join kind is full outer. Now when I click OK, it opens up the editor. Now this is the first table. Why are there nulls? Well, you can click off in our D supplier table column off to the side of the word table. DB is the record from the right table. And since there's nothing in the left table, it shows null. Similarly, if we click on the table for kangaroo, well, kangaroo was on the left, nothing on the right. I'm going to click the Expand button. I do not want to use original column name, so I uncheck that, click OK. I'm looking at the data types. It's fine. Definitely want to name this. There it is, Full Outer Product Supplier. Click the drop down, Close and Load. I want this as a table on the existing sheet. I'm going to try and click in A22, click OK. And there we have our full outer. Now, actually, look at that supplier ID dot one. Maybe I don't want that, so I'm going to double click this to edit the query. Double click, and I'm, I'm going to call this supplier ID dash S and enter. Come over here, F2, N key dash P for product, and enter. Now, let's come over and look. Three steps. I want to go back and click on Source. Come up to the Formula Bar, click Expand, and there it is, Table.NestedJoin. There's the name of the left table. There's the column for the join, right table. Column for the join, that's the name of the new column. And there it is, JoinKind.FullOuter. So whenever we use Table.NestedJoin, the last argument is always going to be join kind dot and whatever the name of the join is. Now everything else is fine, so we can click Close and Load. Now I want to move this up into the full outer, so right click down to Move Group, and it's completely off the screen, Full Outer. All right, so we have Full Outer. I'm going to collapse this, our next join is on the sheet left ante. So I'm going to click left ante. Our goal here is to see who attended only the San Jose conference. Table 1, Table 2, this is the left, this is the right. We can see that Saul is in this column, but not in this column. When we do an anti-left, we're interested only in the items that are in the left table and not in the right table. All right, so I went ahead and imported these, created a folder, and put those two table queries into the folder, into the folder called anti-queries. Now I'm going to click in a single cell, data, get data, down to combine and merge. If we want to do the keyboard, Alt A P N Q M. All right, so we're going to select San Jose names one. Now this is the left query. Notice it's at the top. So the top is always the left. Bellevue names two, that'll be the right or the bottom. I select the two columns and the join kind, left ante. Now just as a note, this is a very common task in Excel. And over in Excel, we would use the match function to compare. But here, left ante gives us everything in the first that's not in the second. Now I click OK. That opens the query editor. Let's name it. Left ante employees attend San Jose only and enter. Now in this result, we'll see something strange. Well, of course, on the left, it lists all the names. But all of these names are only in the left or the first table. If we click off to the side of the word table, every single record will appear null because there's no matching value for every one of these employees. Now we don't need this column. Right click Remove. I come over to Source, click the formula bar, and there it is. It has 
the left table and join column, right table join column, name of the new column, and there it is, join kind dot left anti. Now we're going to close and load, close and load to existing worksheet, and I want to put it in E5, click OK. So left anti is common when we want everything from the first, but not from the second. Now, if we go to right ante here, I'm going to click down here. Most of the time, we don't do right ante. And as we'll see later, we don't usually do right outer either, because we use left anti and just adjust the left and right table. But occasionally, your setup is such that you really want to do a right anti. No problem. Now I went ahead and imported these. We can see they have a different name than the tables we just did for left. These are San Jose right anti 01 and Bellevue right anti 02. Now we can either use the data, the long method to get to our merge, get data, or we can use a keyboard. Alt A P N Q M. The left table or top table is going to be San Jose right anti. Select the column. Our right table, this is the table we're interested in, Bellevue right anti. Select, click the column. Now we come down to our join kind, and we're going to select right anti. Now right anti, again, is not very common, because what could we have done? Simply done left anti and adjusted the order of the tables. But no problem, we can do it this way. San Jose, then Bellevue, when we do a right, that means only the names here that are not over here will be extracted. Now I'm going to click OK to open the editor. We will name this something like right anti-employee attend Bellevue only and enter. Now something interesting happened when we merged these two tables, these two queries. That's the first table or query. That's the second one. This is the left. So guess what? On the left, we have nothing matching, so there's a single null. Now when we merge, that second table always comes in as a table column. So all of the matching names come over as a single table. If I click off to the right, I can see there's the table. Roxanne, Fanny, those are the names from the second table that were not in the first. These are the employees that went to the Bellevue conference, but not the San Jose conference. Now we do not need this column, so right click Remove. We want to expand. Click the Expand button. Uncheck Use Original. Click OK. If we go back to Source and up to the Formula bar, we can see this is join kind dot right anti. Now we can close and load, close and load to. I want to put this on the existing sheet. Make sure it's E5. Click OK. And there's our right anti just the people that went to only Bellevue. Now I move the right anti up into the anti queries. I'm going to collapse this. All right, now we want to go look at a left outer. And if I scroll the sheets over, I can see we have one, two, three examples of left outer. I'm going to click on left outer one. Here's our left table. Here's our right table. The goal is simple. I want to join the two tables in a merge using the product column. I want to keep everything from the left and only matching from the right. Our goal is to deliver a merge table that has everything, including kangaroo, from our sales table and a new column that brings over the matching prices. This type of left outer join will simulate VLOOKUP in Excel or a one-to-many relationships in the data model. Now I've imported the Excel tables as queries. I highlight both, and now I want to right click, move to group, and I'm going to create the folder right here, new group. We'll call this something like left outer, and enter. So now I have the two table queries in a folder named left outer. I've opened up the merge dialog box, and the left query, or the top query, is going to be F sales. Select product, that's the column to join. The second or right or bottom query is going to be D product price, not D product. We already used that in an earlier query. This one is D product price. Select product. And there it is. The default is left outer. Now I click OK to open the editor. We're going to name this 
something like left outer lookup price and enter. Now the second table, our right D product price table, comes in as a table column. When I click for quad off to the right, I can see a table was returned with two columns. We're trying to get that price. For kangaroo, the table shows nothing because the table is empty. Now we can expand, click in the Expand button. Uncheck Use Original, and I only want Price. Click OK. There's our three columns. The data types are fine. If I go look at Source, there it is, JoinKind.LeftOuter. Now I can come up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Existing Sheet, and I definitely want it in G4. Click OK. And there is our left outer merge to do a classic lookup. Kangaroo is included because the left should include everything. Majestic Butte is not included because the right only includes matching prices. Now that's our first left outer. Let's go look at our second left outer. Now in this example, we have a lookup table and a sales table. And we want to use two columns to join the two tables. The reason? Because quad red and quad blue have different prices. There's no unique identifier in this table, like there probably should be. But no problem. With Power Query, we can create a unique identifier in this lookup table by selecting two columns and matching them up on this side, the foreign key, with two columns. Now I went ahead and imported both of our tables as queries, and then opened the Merge dialog box. Our first table is going to be F Sales Color. I'm going to select Product, holding Shift, clicking on Color. I love that it says 1, 2. It's going to use those two columns as our key. And this is our foreign key in the Sales table. You can see Carlota Blue, Carlota Blue, so duplicates are OK. Now we want to find D product price color. Select product, hold shift or control, click color, one, two. Left outer is going to be good. Click OK. Now let's name this. I named it something like left outer two lookup values and enter. Now I'm hoping that quad red and quad blue will have a different price. This is our table column. I click off to the right, and sure enough, quad red is showing up as 43. Click in the second row, quad blue is 41. So we have what we want. Click the Expand button. Uncheck everything. We only want price. Uncheck Use Original. Click OK. Now we can close and load. Close and load to existing I6. Click OK. And there we have done a two-column lookup to return the price. Now our third example of left outer. We have a single invoice here, and I need to pull the matching multiple rows or records over. And we're doing left outer. That means I want to get all from the first, matching from the second. Now we don't have any discrepancies here. There are pure matches. But we're going to be able to pull either the records, or during the merge, we can actually tell it to aggregate, which is what we want. We want to add the sales. Now I have imported both of these Excel tables as queries and opened the Merge dialog box. The top query, the left or first table, is going to be from our dropdown, the Invoice Level table. I'm going to select Invoice Number. That's the column we're using for the join. Now we come to the bottom, the second or the right table. This is going to be Invoice Line Product Level. Select. Select Invoice Number. Join Kind is left outer. Click OK. We open the Power Query Editor, and we're going to name this. I called it Left Outer Pull the Invoice Level and Enter. Now, the invoice level lists the three records. The table, this is the invoice line level. We can see down here there are three products or line level sales numbers that we want to pull into the invoice level table. Now, here's the amazing thing. When I click the Expand button, 
I have the option to click Expand, which means if I click Cancel, that would take all three lines here and match it up with repeated for this first row. That discount is what we're really after. The 0.065, it would be repeated three times. That's if we expand. Now if I click the Expand button, I'm totally allowed from that Expand button to either repeat all of the rows or aggregate. Now that means there'll be one row added. But when we check Sum of Sales, those three numbers from down here will be added. Now notice this is pretty polite. It tried to sum for columns that had numbers and count for columns that had text. Now I'm going to uncheck Use Original, click OK. And that is pretty amazing. Now if we can see up in the formula bar, table.aggregate table columns. The source, that's the previous step. Invoice line product level, that was the column. This is the sales column, which we want to add. That's the function, list.sum. And this is the name of the new column. Now I want to change the data type. So I click ABC123, and I'm going to change this to currency. And that will do it. We've pulled the three records from the invoice line level or product level table. And instead of repeating the three lines for each one of our records here, we chose to aggregate. Now we can close and load, close and load to existing. I'm going to put this in H6. Click OK. And there we have our merge table. Left outer to pull multiple records and aggregate. Now let's go look at right outer. Now right outer is rarely done because what do we do? We do left outer and adjust the order of the tables. But let's see how to do this. Now we use these two tables in a full outer, which meant this record wasn't included in the second, but it was in the final. This record is not included in the first, but it was included in the final merge. Now if we try to do a right outer, remember this is the right side. So we want everything from here and only matching from the second. So the result will be that kangaroo record will not be included. Now I went ahead and imported both tables as queries and opened the merge dialog box. From the dropdown, the left table is going to be all the way down to D product right outer. Supplier ID is the column we're going to use to join, just as we did in our full outer. The second table, the bottom table or the right table, and I'm going to have to scroll down here. It is D supplier right outer. Supplier ID will be the column that will connect the two tables. Now from the drop down, I'm going to select right outer, all from the second, matching from the first. Click OK. Name the query, something like right outer product and supplier, and enter. Now we can see a null value in our first table. If we click off to the side in our table column, there is the matching record in the second table that doesn't have a corresponding match in the first table. And since this is a right outer, that record will definitely be included. If we look up to the left side, we do not see the kangaroo record because it's not included. The left side only includes matching. Come to the Expand, uncheck Use Original. We want everything, click OK. I'm going to rename Supplier ID. This one will be from the Supplier side, so dash S. Rename Supplier ID, dash P for Product. The data types are looking fine. Close and load, close and load to existing. I'm going to try and put it in K5. Click OK. And sure enough, if we scroll over, there is our right outer. Everything from the right, only matching from the left. All right, let's go look at our last join. I'm going to scroll over and look at the sheet self join. Now our goal is to take this one table and merge it using employee ID here and employee who referred new employee. Now this is called a self-join because we're going to join two columns in the same table. What does 1488 mean? It means that Surad Coolinator referred the new employee Kenny. And we want a name instead of the number. 
I imported the table as a query and open Merge. We're going to select the same table, Employee Table for both the top or the left and the bottom or the right. For our top table, I'm going to select Employee who referred new employee. This one has duplicates. So this, in essence, will be the lookup table when I select Employee ID. Left outer, that means we have the foreign key up here. Matching from the second, that means we have the unique identifier primary key or lookup column on the right. Now I click OK. Self join employee referral and enter. That'll be the name. Now I can come and look for SURAD Coolinator. The table returns nothing, but when we come down to 1488, sure enough, Kenny was referred by SURAD Coolinator. I'm going to click the Expand, uncheck Use Original, uncheck everything, and all I want is the Name column. All right, so I have Name, click OK. And there it is. Kenny and Deborah were referred by Sue Rad Coolinator. Now I'm going to sort the table according to the original employee ID. Click the drop down, sort ascending. We want to rename this new column, referral name, and enter. If we go back and look at source, go up to the formula bar. Sure enough, the same table is listed as the left and right in our table.nested join when we did join kind dot left outer. Now I can close and load, close and load to existing F5, click OK. And there we have done a self join. All right, that was a lot of fun with Power Query. We saw all six joins, all six merges. Inner join, full outer, left anti, right anti, left outer, three awesome examples, right outer, and even a self join. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including our next video, number eight in this class. We'll see a little bit more about merges. We'll actually use a few of these joins to create a report. All right, we'll see you next video.